All right, well, I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board to order. This is the April 24th meeting and we are in the Town Hall Annex. Um, we will adjourn early this evening. So um, we're looking forward to getting through our agenda items um, and then we will adjourn no later than 7.50 to town meeting. Um, so we thank Beth Locke for being with us here this evening from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into our first meeting after, or excuse me, our first agenda item after we um, do a brief introduction for the record. Um, I'm Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. Kim Lau. Eugene Benson. Steve Ravelock. And we are joined by our two members of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Director Claire Ricker and Assistant Director uh, Kelly Lanema. All right, uh, so let's move into the first agenda item, which is the ARB rules and regulations. And I will hand it over to Claire for the proposed changes. Sure, great, thank you. And thank you, Jean, for um, you know, your, your comments, uh, yeah. comments and, edit, and edits uh, today. Um, so uh, Kelly has been working on this um, document <clears throat> and has been looking um, to include updated languages as it relates to um, zoning uh, bylaw amendments and comments uh, by the AG's office um, from 2022. So Kelly, if you'd like to review those, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, so we just, in the front, we just mentioned which um, rules have been or are proposed to be amended. Um, and then let's see here. Some of these are minor rule, minor amendments just to reflect changes in title. So here we have um, change it, change, change it, sorry, change administrative assistant to office manager because that's a new title. Um, the other, let me scan down here. One of the sections that the board wanted to review was um, the fees for, for appearing before the redevelopment board. There have been times in the past when the board has um, indicated that they would like a little bit more flexibility for waiving fees. And so um, we've added in the statement here on the rules. Um, Jean has amended it, um, thank you, Jean, to reflect maybe a few conditions under which the rules could be, or under which the fee could be changed <clears throat> instead of having it just be wide open. Um, then the other, let me scroll down here. We also added in a rule regarding the solar energy system assessment. Um, this was again, based on a prior discussion, I believe at the end of middle of last year. Um, and then I updated mm -hmm. board decisions here to reflect um, housing choice legislation since that has not been fixed. And I think that was, I'm pretty sure that was it. Yes, that was it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly, uh, I'm, just, I'm just, sorry, no, go ahead. If you wouldn't <clears throat> mind just for the record mm -hmm. explaining the difference in the um, voting thresholds for the zoning and sure. related to the housing choice. Thing. Sure. So under most conditions, the board has to have a supermajority or four out of five members have to vote to approve a project. If a project involves a certain, if it, if it involves multifamily housing, um, things regarding apartment uses like par, um, parking that ref, that it weighs in on the ability of someone to produce multifamily housing, there's a, there's a couple of conditions that are laid out in section nine of Mass General Law. Uh, chapter 40a and so under those conditions if a project meets those requirements then it just needs to have it can be approved by a simple majority vote instead of a super majority great thank you very much um so jean i know that you had a couple of clarifications and i believe one question for the board so if you yeah. would like to start off that would be great yes can you put up <clears throat> the page yeah. please kelly with the uh, waiver i could send my cursor here hang on I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> it just ran across the screen. Yeah. Okay. So the draft <laughs> just said that we, in our discretion, can waive or reduce any administrative fee, but it was open ended, and I sort of felt like it wasn't appropriate for us to have no standards whatsoever. So thinking through what we've done in the past, I put two in based on the applicant's limited or inability to pay or upon a grossly disproportionate disparity between the fees and the capital income of the applicant. So that is my suggestion about how we still have discretion, but more narrow than everything, because I'm always afraid when rules and regulations 
let an agency do anything it wants with no limits to. Great. Um, I just have one question for you, Jean. Given the way that you have the second part written there, um, or upon um, disparity between the fees and the capital and income of the applicant, do we need the first piece, limited inability to pay? Because I, I feel like that covers when you're talking about the income of the applicant. Mm, and the well, it's slightly different, right? Because one is the inability to pay and the other is um, disproportionate between the fees. Let's say the fees are some incredible amount of mm -hmm. money, um, but they have neither income nor capital to do it. So th I think they're very slightly different. Okay. That was my thought around it. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Ken, your thoughts on the uh, proposed changes? I don't know, I agree with you. I think what you're trying to say right now is let's say uh, someone wants to put in a multifamily um, low-income housing and they need some sort of approval, the fee for that can, can get up to like, I don't know, ten, twelve thousand dollars which they may not have at that time. And uh, we can waive that to make or, that or reduce it. Reduce it to make right. that go away yeah. so that it gives them ability. They may have it later on once they get the project up and running, but the very really beginning start of the project uh, is the hard part. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Great. Uh, Steve, any comments? Looks fine to me. Okay, great. Uh, so I believe that we will vote at our next meeting, correct? Or can no, we you do can that vote at this evening? meeting because it was advertised. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, is there a is there any other discussion? Just just if you go back to the very first page. Yes. When we do this, you do have to change the first one okay. to was was voted by the oh, board. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the uh, ARB rules and regulations as amended? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I may as well. Those have been approved. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so that closes agenda item um, number one. And we'll now move to agenda item number two. And again, thank Beth Locke for coming to meet with us today. Um, we had discussed uh, when I went to a chamber event, and I think even before that, mm -hmm. an opportunity for the redevelopment board to have a conversation with Beth as a representative of the um, Chamber of, of Commerce as the executive director uh, to discuss many of the proposals, um, the Warren articles that we are looking forward to putting forth in the fall, and just in general, how we can support the, the businesses who are looking to, um, whether it's to Im improve their property, locate within Arlington, um, and ensure that we are in um, alignment with, um, again, the, the needs of the, the community and the, and the businesses. So um, before we get started, I'll turn it over to Claire because I know that um, the department has prepared a, a memo um, related to the discussion uh, here um, and economic development recommendations. Sure, and I will... Um... I will reference a, a memo from Kelly from um, earlier or last week while I was out on vacation. Um, I think it, it basically uh, references where we have our economic development um, implementation items and the various plans, our arts and culture plan, the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan, and we do have some related <clears throat> business uh, zoning recommendations that we're looking to implement at the next, uh, uh, at, a, at a future town meeting in the fall. Um, along with some other zoning amendments uh, that were not going to be considered at, at, at tonight's meeting and at, at this current um, town meeting. Um, also, um, economic development uh, master plan section, and then um, looks like we have a, a report uh, more than a decade old related to um, uh, related to development, um, et cetera. We are currently without an economic development coordinator. Um, I have reached out to HR uh, to see who uh, who has applied and how and how many. Um, I, I know we did get a few, um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can get that person on board um, to continue the work of uh, the DJ Beauregard, who was here uh, for uh, a short time but managed to make uh, quite a splash in Friday and Tech. Um, so thank you, Beth, for coming. My pleasure. Great. 
Um, so what I'd love to do um, maybe is open this up by seeing if, if you have any initial thoughts that you um, would like to, to share with the board, things that, that you've heard from the businesses in town. We'd love to um, you know, share with you some of the items that, that we're looking at in terms of whether they're individual business districts or you know, within the town in general that will hopefully allow um, businesses and, and developers to put together projects that prioritize um, uh, businesses, especially along our major corridors, such as Mass Ave, Broadway, um, and Section of Summer Street. So. Mm -hmm. So I don't have anything particular prepared because sure. this was a little bit short notice and I wasn't sure exactly <laughs> what we were going to be right. talking about. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but I'm very happy to be invited here. And I think it's really important um, to have these kind of conversations. And hopefully this is this will be the first of many. Um, I mean, there are so many things we could talk about, I guess. Um, my biggest concern uh, with any sort of projects that might be under review right now and up for uh, you know approval now would be that um, there not be a net loss mm -hmm. of retail or, or you know uh, first floor level retail space. Um, we, although we hear about vacant space in Arlington, um, it. It's more that we have. Um, I don't. Th I don't think the vacancy rate is anywhere near as high as people think it is. For for one thing, um, if right. statistically, mm -hmm. and um, secondly, one of the I think we probably all know that many of the spaces that we have that are available for lease are not appealing to tenants, current day types of tenants. So. Um, I think some of the property owners out there may be having a hard time renting some of these spaces that they have, but that's not, it's not because people aren't looking at Arlington. In fact, people, a lot of people are looking at Arlington. Um, and I think- What are they looking at Arlington for? What are they thinking of bringing here? Um, I would say there's always, there are always people looking for restaurant bar type space, but significant good size places. Um, and we don't have, we don't have that many choices. I mean, you know, um, the choice the places that um, you know something like the common ground space did sit vacant for a while, but that was mostly because of the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, that that would have leased up a lot quicker if it hadn't been for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we don't have many options like that. Um, I know of several tenants that are looking right now to do a deal uh, for a pub type space, and they aren't able to either find the right size space, number one, or when they try to get creative, um, they don't always, you know, it's, they don't have, uh, well, I don't really want to go there, but it, it, it's the, the, the quality of the space that we have is and not been high. Maintained. Mm -hmm. Yes. Et cetera. So, I mean, that's my number one thing is that um, I'd love to see any projects that you're looking at going forward that, if anything, we gain some, some um, appealing, and, and I wouldn't be able to tell you right now what the, the right, the sweet spot is for square footage, but mm -hmm. I'm sure we could, you know, get that information by talking to some commercial real estate agents and that kind of thing about who's looking. Um, and um, and then the other major issue that I would love to see, I don't know if it's within the, the scope of this board at all, but I'd really love to see um, some effort put into uh, I guess I, I might be coming from the inspectional services, but um, the the maintenance of signage, signage, mm -hmm. maintenance of signage, quality mm -hmm. of signage, um, anything, everything to do with signage. Signage mm -hmm. that is on a building that no one has been in the space for mm -hmm. five years, that sign shouldn't still be up. Mm -hmm. And okay. and I know it's, you know- The rules say it shouldn't be The rules say, right. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an area that, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. 
and and then quality of signage as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and certainly quality of but building maintenance. I, you know that that's something that I think mm -hmm. we all know we'd like to see, but it's hard to. I don't know how that can be achieved within the the uh, rules of the town, but we certainly have um, a building a stock of older older buildings. older and. Mm -hmm buildings that could stand mm -hmm. some love right. yeah mm -hmm. so those are my main issues but i mean i'd love to hear everything that you're working on and how we might be able to you know help inform that as well sure um please go ahead ken uh, you were say no, no. Um, well yeah i just wonder how we can work together on i'm going to go there where you don't want to go <laughs> okay <laughs> there's probably maybe a handful Maybe a dozen so owners uh, along Mass Ave, and they own the properties outright. And it's less riskier for them to do nothing and still make money than to invest in their own property to make make something out of it. And. I'm just wondering, is there a way we, where we can work together on somehow getting something so that we would encourage the owners to um, look into developing their, uh, redeveloping their lands to, to do that? I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple of examples, okay? okay? Right. Yeah. Um, one was, you know, that I, it started with me maybe, you know, only six years ago, maybe, the Atwood House. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. That was a that was a hole in the wall house that had drug addicts and everybody else that's in there. Okay, and everybody was telling me you can't do anything about it. The owners are away, and we've been doing this and that. So we finally put a a, a, a little wedge in there, saying that it, it may be excessive, but you know CBS wanted to increase their change their signage and branding a little bit. So we held that as part of their permit, and they had to come up and. Do something about it. They still haven't done anything. They, <laughs> they've done everything but do anything about it. Okay. Does CVS own the property? No, no, no. Oh, no. I don't understand. The person who owns the Atwood House owns the property. Oh, owns the CVS property. And they, okay. they yeah. shifted the house over. They, you know, we gave them a special permit to build that CVS there next to the high school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's still under our um, preview, right? Yes. So we sort of forced them because they, they want to change some signage and we modify that special permit. That they had to address that. It's mm -hmm. come to a complete stop right now. I don't know what's going on over there now. It's it's an historic, you know, right? Uh, yes, I believe they were waiting for a demolition delay. It's, but yeah, demolition delay expires in June of this okay. year. But they had it before. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you applied, the, the time stops then. But they were just kicking the can down the road, kicking the can down the road. Okay, and what they want to do is they want to tear it down, which is a shame, but still moving forward. And they were going to built two floors of um, uh, office space. And it was giving incubator space for startup companies. And I thought that was good. Mm. Up, upstairs would be some housing just to mm -hmm. balance the thing out, OK? But stuff like that, Yeah, we need to find stuff like that to right. encourage the owners to do something like that. Um, and you, you, you said it earlier, a lot of these vacant stores, they just put up paper or nothing at all over, over the storefronts and leave it alone. I thought we had passed some sort of um, vacant, storefront. vacant storefront that had to make sure that it's clean, that they had to dress it up and all that kind of stuff. And if they don't do that, we would find them. So right now, I'm not finding right now any where, where we have some enforcement power or when you say- Well, that's where I, that that definitely goes in line with my comment about signage. I mean, it's it's enforcement of the existing rules and um, regulations, I guess. That, that, that would have been a better way for me to worry, but I was thinking, because I totally agree with you. That that's, signage is just one part of it. Empty storefront, taking care of your space is another. Um, trying to lease it, you know, um, showing that you're trying to lease it uh, and registering with the town on that is another. I don't personally think that the, I, I think it's great that we have a vacant store bylaw. I don't think it's, that um, demanding, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it's like, it's not 
it's fairly minimal to find. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. But we're gonna think of something like that. Right. And then but, encouragement right now, the building officials right now, they haven't increased in size. And I'm, I'm assuming if we're serious about that, we should, you know, talk to the uh, select board and say, look, let's fund some money and put and put the money what we want to do and say, hey, let's have encouragement and maybe have a, a designated person, a part-time person I or think whatever. That's a great idea. And work I would support on, that one hundred percent. But we elected that together, not from, yes, yeah, uh, not, yeah, absolutely. not just from the board yep. here, yeah, but your board, right? And of course, right. I say I support it. I have to take it to my board, but All I think right. it's pretty likely that they would support it but, too. But anything to encourage owners of existing properties instead of just leaving it, yeah, derelict. That say, hey, they they will to work with us. Let's go out, reach out to them, talk to them, say, hey, mm -hmm. let's what we can do. About uh, and doing, uh, encouraging them to, uh, to develop their properties. I totally agree. I mean, if there are ways that I I'm not familiar with, like what what is appropriate and and not if legal is the right word or or what what we can truly ask of a building owner. But if there are ways that we can come up with and to work together to do that, I I would love to do that. Can I provide two examples to that? So. When Ali Carter was still here in the economic um, development coordinator position, um, together with the Arlington Heights, the Neighborhood Action Plan Group mm -hmm. and Inspector Champa, um, they that those three groups together actually put together um, a plan for reaching out to the Arlington Heights district um, owners regarding mm -hmm. signage. Fortunately, you know when she left, mm -hmm. that that for, um, that effort. Um, has languished a bit, but in addition to that, um, one of the four corners of the um, Park Ave and Mass Ave intersection, one owner had elected to um, repaint and clean up the entire facade of their building. Yeah, which so, was much in, in yeah. Right. Well so that. using yeah. that as a um, as an opportunity to have a discussion with the other three owners to say look what this has done in this area. Can you imagine what would happen if all four owners together at the same time invested in their property? And it was successful in convincing um, several of those owners to repaint, to, to yeah. repair some of their, their storefronts. So did you, did, did you bring them to the tape? Like who? There was, yes, so there were that Arlington Heights neighborhood group together with Inspector Champa and Allie Carter got together and figured out who had relationships okay. right. that we could leverage um, and, and talk about the benefits to their tenants and to, um, to them as yeah. business owners in terms of the, the, um, the curb appeal yeah. and the, 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 um, the increase in foot traffic that would be expected once I think, the really, you know, it's interesting. I didn't realize. So we had enough. one of our board members is on that um, committee. Yeah. So we it you hasn't know, met in a, in a while. Hasn't met in a while. I know that. But it, it but, was doing uh, some good work. Right. I, and I knew, I mean, I definitely was aware at the time of what was happening, but I didn't know there were direct contacts to landlords. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I've done some of that in it was very the center. Yes. Um, and I have very good relationships with some, some of the landlords mm -hmm. in the center. Um, but it, it, there's more than a handful. There are a handful that own multiple properties, but some of the ones that we know we'd like to see, I mean, there are, there are a lot of different property owners, I think more than, more than a handful, but I, I mean, yeah, I don't know what the approach would be, what the incentives would be, you know, it's hard for me to offer incentives, but if we, if the town could come up with some potential incentives and we go together, you know, and I represent the business community and yeah, yeah. So if I could suggest something, a lot of this came out of a walking tour that that Arlington Heights group put together with Inspector Champa and with Ali representing the Department of Planning and Community Development to walk just the Arlington Heights business district to, yep. to talk about what were the priorities, what were the highest priorities, who knew whom, and what could we what could we put together to to affect change? And those were the two priorities that were 
and there were many on the list, but those, those, you know, were potential quick wins yep. that were identified. And I'm wondering if, you know, some subset of this group and a representative from the planning department and yourself, and uh, maybe another member of the chamber, mm -hmm. we were to identify again, sections of town yep. where we did that kind of a walking tour and just I identified yep. opportunities um, to, to create some sort of um, an impact, again, starting with putting together a, um, a list of priorities. What, which buildings we wanted to target first and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Can I add one more group? Please. One more group. Uh, Department of Public Works should be part of that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mike Rademacher did okay. join this walking tour. So just thank you for having that. the fact that town's willing to step up and take care of the sidewalks, the curb cuts, the, mm -hmm. uh, any plantings up there, street lighting, any of that kind of stuff to help encourage Absolutely. The activation street light there. Mm -hmm. The owners are only going to get excited about that because now their investment in there is only is is, is, is coupled with what's going on there. Yeah. So if you take an holistic approach, I think. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I wish I had, um, it's just reminding me, um, Friday I was in Wellesley and I noticed um, a sign on a couple of signs on an empty storefront and I went and looked at it. Met, I took pictures, I meant to look it up, but there was a, um, they were advertising a meeting for um, streetscape um, planning, you know, mm -hmm. and come and come and give your um, opinion on these two or three potential new streetscape plans. And it said, and it was from the equivalent of this board in Wellesley. And that would be, I mean, I could see that could maybe be like a long-term goal that could come out of meeting, walking mm -hmm. tours like that and that kind of thing. I mean, the streetscape has changed nicely, you know, to some degree in the center and there's still work coming up. The parking lot, Russell Common parking lot um, renovation is going to be happening and there have been new plantings and, you know, there are little, little baby steps are happening around town, but a more comprehensive <clears throat> mm -hmm. streetscape plan. I don't know who, you know, exactly what's involved in that. I, I think quite a bit, but I, I would, I would love to see something like that. I think, and again, before I, I throw it out to some of the other board members for their thoughts, one of the other things that could be an interesting part of that kind of a walking tour discussion are, um, is a discussion of some of the proposed bylaws that we um, are planning on putting forth for fall, a special town meeting in the fall related to zoning with regard to things like um, uh, building height, um, mm -hmm. modifications and that we are proposing again to increase the um, opportunity for, for greater um, business yeah. Uh, space or mixed use, you know, where there's quite a bit of underutilized one story. Yeah. Um, so just creating the opportunity right, right. for people Incentivizing to, them exactly, to, want to, look to at see an opportunity for Absolutely. investment. Yeah. 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 Um, Ken, did you have anything? Uh, I'm going to let my other one speak. Great. I still feel sure. Steve, I had a question. Mm. Um, this is sort of a, a long arc of history kind of question. Um, you know, if you go back half a century or so, in fact, just slightly over half a century, our business districts were a lot bigger. You know, they ran sort of like the entire length of Mass Ave and most of the length of back and forth along Broadway. And, you know, back in the 70s or so, we sort of, the town, or we rewrote our bylaws, but two things that were part of that, which I think affected the business district were, one was removing a substantial part of it from the map. So areas that were... I'm sorry. Removing a part of yeah. it. Yeah. So there's back in not having an old map handy. If you could I think, can pull it up. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I lived here then, so you, I, I may remember. So the the <laughs> business districts used to stretch like about 150 feet in, you know, from Mass Ave going 150 feet in one side and 100 150 feet in the other side, the entire length of the town. And I'm not sure. Okay. So without the breaks for residential right. properties so, that we see today, have a lot. Example. A lot of um, commercial was knocked down to build residential. Well, no, it wasn't so much. So the black areas are yeah. residential. The dark colored areas along okay. like Mass Ave. Yeah. Now the business districts have always allowed apartments. Mm -hmm. 
And, but what um, en ended up happening in the 70s was, was areas like, you know, you think of this section of East Arlington. Mm -hmm. Any place that was in the business district that didn't have a business got turned into residential. So you kind of, that didn't have a business. Okay. But which the way our bylaw works, you it's next to impossible to change that back. Okay. The other thing, the other sort of, you know, main consequence of, of this, you know, redoing the map was there were two business districts in, in effect. Uh, so there was one in Arlington Center mm -hmm. and, you know, everything else. Mm -hmm. And by two districts, I mean, like, basically two sets of rules oh. where, you know, the current map, we've just kind of chopped everything up into, like, this is an automotive District, six. this is, you know, we've we chopped it up into six districts mm -hmm. and all of them have their own like little variations and what you can do and what you can't do. And I mean, even on, you could have a block where, you know, you can put a hotel here, but you can't put a hotel here, yeah. even though it's right next door to it. And like one of the sort of the two questions I have are, are the business districts we have now big enough? You know, should we have more land devoted to business districts. And you know, pra from a practical standpoint, how difficult are the sort of like, you know, the very the parcel to parcel variations of the the, the different the way that the rules change so so frequently. That is something I can't answer because okay. I, I don't I, I'm not um, knowledgeable okay. enough about the zoning mm -hmm. and, and that I don't hear enough about that in, mm -hmm. in my work to be able uh, to okay. answer that. Um, and the other question, I guess that's a hard one for me too. I think if the, bis the business districts themselves, if they had the right kind of spaces, mm -hmm. I think the mm -hmm. size seems okay, but okay. they don't. So for that reason, I guess I would I could envision expansion. Okay. Um, because I think we do we lose many potential tenants to other towns because we don't have we don't have space that is appealing to what they need what they need what they need. And that would, you know, I'm kind of thinking at the retail level, but mm -hmm. it's also true. You know, we don't attract startup space. We don't mm -hmm. attract. Um, uh, any kind of small high tech and that kind of thing. We just don't have the space. Mm -hmm. So if we, yeah, it certainly would be great for the retail and restaurants if we had more people coming, working in Arlington and office type jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, I can't speak to the zoning part though, I'm okay. sorry. I don't. No, no, I, 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 what you, it makes total sense. If we could simplify the zoning, we can, we could do more. Is that, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, basically I was wondering if you ever ran into a case of maybe some business owners trying, looking and looking, wants to start a business in town, may have identified a couple of spot, a potential spot or two talks to the Chamber of Commerce and then, you know, they go back and do some more and they find out, oh, what well, the thing we wanted to do in that space, well, we can't actually do it. Right. I don't. I know, I think somebody from, you know, the in the economic development coordinator okay. position would tend to hear more of that kind of okay. thing. Um, not all of my work is involved in, you know, people who are looking mm -hmm. at town. A lot of stories are, most of my work is people who are already here. Oh, okay. Um, but I hear a lot about people looking anecdotally from landlords and that kind of thing and um and other businesses so um i'm not i'm not totally involved in in that uh, I, I was just yeah. wondering what yeah, you yeah. might have heard that's, yeah yeah that's, no, that's all. Not, not, mm -hmm. good question because we could we could guess but it's 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 better to ask someone who you know who's does it on it does it every day <laughs> yeah well again I, I i would think that you know there are some um we could look at talking to some commercial real estate agents who there's one in particular I know has works with um, a member of my board who owns a couple of buildings and this this landlord almost never has vacancy. She owns two good size retail buildings in town and they both are she has turnover, but when she has space, she always fills them. Okay. And she, so, I mean, right there, that'll tell you that mm -hmm. people are looking. Mm -hmm. And for that, for that reason, I've asked her about, you know, what types of businesses 
are looking at your spaces. Who do you work with? How do you bring them in? Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's she would be a great person to um, talk to in terms of what her experience is in terms, I found it very valuable um, and, and have learned a lot from her. And I know she's interested herself if she, in seeing things improve in this regard in town. Yes, I know like our master plans, economic development summary, I think it's actually, it might be listed as an appendix, but the cough report talks about this as well, but they, you know, they're, they're leakage reports mm -hmm. and we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're sending a lot of business out of town mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it would, I would, I, I would hope that we could do something about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. One of them is what I want to talk about is, I mean, when I first moved this town a while back, this was a dry town. Yeah. You, you probably oh, yeah. know that well. Yep. <laughs> okay. You suddenly recently we've become wet. <laughs> uh, but uh, the owner that was going to take over or wanted to look at, at Tango. Mm -hmm. Okay. The brewery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were they were all set to go, and they found that the regulations that we had for um, consumption of alcohol was a hidden to them. They moved the town over. All right. Really. Yes. Mm -hmm. and that was the reason. And the I, I, regulations that we had for the consumption. So, so in other words, the, the amount of alcohol with purchase, that, without yeah. food. And oh. the two drink okay. Yeah, it was, we, it was the, we've heard it, that from multiple. It was the two drinks versus food, yeah. you know, yeah. and that and it, it, that just that doesn't work for them. Yeah. So we have to look at it and say, hey, this is one thing that's holding back. That's some, sort of a new model, that brewery, you know, mm -hmm. that, that those types of breweries haven't been around for very long, where tap rooms and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. That I'm, I'm sure you're right about that. Yeah. And that could have been, I mean, I was excited for that. Yeah. But it's a shame that it went next, the next yep. town over, like Steve said, yep. we're driving them away because of our rules. Yep. Okay. So, so I hadn't heard that one, but that makes there are probably many other rules, right? I mean, I that was the, the fifty seat minimum for a um, all for a whole bar, full yeah. bar yeah. is also a problem. Yeah. With 50, yes. 50 seats. Is I didn't hear that one. I just, I just heard that yeah. one there, yeah. and yes. they just walked away. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first substantive article that town meeting will take up is, you know, is is another example. I, I think where so this involves uh, self service gas stations. So there is a station on Broadway where the owners wanted to do allow self serve. We don't allow it in town. They brought a, you know, proposed a bylaw change last year, um, you know, asking, basically asking, let us, let us do self-serve. Town meeting votes, votes this down. They have, they're trying again, and we'll see how this goes, but there's sometimes I, this, this isn't, this is an, sort of a, another some sometimes, yeah, I, I think our rules are aren't really as friendly as we can they could be. And I think there's also a real hesitancy towards changing them in some cases. Hmm. I don't know what the answer to this is, but it's it's just but something I'm it's a challenge. Perhaps working together with mm -hmm. you know the chamber mm -hmm. and and the business owners to understand from the owner's perspective as well the impact. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have not reached out as much as we perhaps could have in the past. So mm -hmm. being able to do that more mm -hmm. in the future um, as we work to help explain what the potential impact is and ask for feedback so that before things are finalized, we can um, make sure to address any either concerns or good ideas that come from the people who are already operating businesses in this town in terms of things that are challenging for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to do some thinking on what the best way. I mean, the walking tour is one, right. uh, you know, some sort of a survey. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we don't have all of the businesses in town as chamber members. Sure. That's another thing, like something like a gas station like that. Had mm -hmm. they been a chamber member and had they reached out to us, we might have tried to help support mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we would have necessarily been successful, right. but it maybe it would have helped their cause mm -hmm. to have some to show chamber support when they presented to. Mm -hmm. And I know we're starting to get low on time, so I do want to make sure that Gene has an opportunity yeah, to, to share his thoughts a couple as well. Questions. I wondered if your members 
talk about traffic, parking, public transportation at all? Or is that just not really on the radar? Uh, parking is probably the only one that I hear about. And, and not say. lately. I haven't heard a lot about it lately. You know, I think, you know, coming out of COVID and traffic in general being lighter and business being lighter, fewer restaurants until we get some some of these, you know, maybe it's changing with, um, with uh, Donutville and, and that kind of thing. Um, but, um, I mean, it's just sort of anecdotal stories. It's it's nothing bad. I I, I don't. In fact, the, the the business that's looking right now, I'm surprised that they haven't talked more about parking. They don't seem bothered by it. They have locations in downtown Boston. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a parking lot next to them, mm -hmm. and they they are used to being in a location where there's people have to go park and walk. So. Um, uh, I don't hear about it as much as I used to, but the other things, I don't hear much at all about public transportation, um, which doesn't mean no one's thinking about it, but I just don't hear about mm -hmm. it. What was the other one? Parking? Uh, traffic. traffic. Oh, traffic. traffic. No, I don't hear about traffic. Um, not foot traffic at all? Because I've talked to a couple of restaurant oh, owners. foot traffic. Mm, that's um, not what I meant, but that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different, yeah, no, I do, I do tend, I would say I do hear a little more about foot traffic that's the thing that everybody asks right. me about right when they when they look into um for a restaurant that's okay yeah. in arlington right they say there's lack of foot traffic and right. then they're not encouraged by it right. and they say there's not enough density along our uh, our uh, mm -hmm. districts business districts to increase to encourage foot traffic Certainly for lunchtime business. Yeah, I mean, the um, again, the only current this current tenant um, that I'm thinking of, he he is aware of the fact that there's um, some residential going up over the Papagino space. He's excited about that. He knows that there's a possibility um, that there there may be more buildings in the center that um, go multi um, use, and he. Is very hot on Arlington. I mean, a lot of these businesses are hot on Arlington. They think Arlington is a hot place. Um, they don't. They're not. They don't seem to be a. They're more destination oriented. Mm -hmm. um, but I. But I don't disagree with you. I mean, um, walking traffic does. Gene, did you have other? I think we're on this. Yeah. Um, so I know that we're kind of at at time uh, because we need to just quickly move to new business and then adjourn to town meeting. Um, but Beth, I'd, I'd love to, you know, maybe see if we could find a time once town meeting is over to schedule some sort of a, a walking tour, perhaps mm -hmm. whether it's, um, you know, one of the potential articles that we're looking at for the fall is to look at a business, um, a new business district that covers all of Arlington Heights. Um, so to Steve's point, oh, Arlington Heights. Just, Heights. Okay. Just so that so rather than six different or five different districts, I think which are just represented within just within the Heights, right? Which yeah. makes it hard to put together. <laughs> I thought uh, you meant about the project. Well, yeah. well, well, bad no, 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 no. Right, exactly. Out. Which wow. is why we're looking at potentially, okay. you know, updating the zoning so that that's a single business district. Yep. Um, you know, that could be one place we look, or we could look, you know, at Arlington Center or East Arlington, but. I think chatting more about that would be um, something that I, I think we'd all be yeah, really interested in. And sure. then also once we get further into the planning process, making sure that we coordinate mm -hmm. with you and the and the chamber for some feedback and um, to see if there are, are areas where the, the chamber would, would be, be supportive based on what the potential outcomes might be. Mm -hmm. you know, we'd love to, to chat with you. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if um, any or all of you ever wanted to attend one of our board meetings, we'd sure. be happy to yeah. do that. Kelly attended last week and yeah. gave a great presentation. And um, we uh, we're going to be bringing on some new board members in the in the near future. And so I want to get them 
right up to speed and working on good, you know, projects like this for sure. I'd be interested in what the chamber thinks about this MBTA communities. I'm guessing that's sure. what we talked about. No, actually, I talked oh, about did? wayfinding on the bikeway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we did. No, we I touched did, on yeah, it. I yeah, did and actually I, I offered to come back. Offered yeah. to come back because yeah. the businesses had expressed a lot of interest in MBTA communities yeah. Yeah. Um, and had generally expressed interest in increased residential density. Mm -hmm. We're somewhat concerned about a loss of potential right. loss of commercial well, that, space. So, I mean, that I think that's going to be one of the tensions. Yep, Some people exactly. want to put more housing where the business districts are now, and yeah. you know, so I think that's, that's be, well. I think that's yeah. where you see like how Lexington responded to that issue is right. interesting. Right, so, it is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, thank okay. you so much. I thank really you, appreciate thank you. it. Thank you so much for having me and yeah. nice to meet you all. You all right. Good to see you. Good to and see you. um look forward to making yes. setting another date. Absolutely. Right. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks. All right. Take care. All right. So that closes agenda item number two. Um, our next item agenda item is new business. Um, I know we're running late. So Claire, did you have anything that you wanted to bring forth for new business? Not particularly. I know we have talked a little bit about, um, you know, our uh, three um, uh, zoning articles that are uh, up for discussion at yes town meeting. Um, we uh, did ask that those items be put on the consent agenda. It looks like there has been a hold um, on those. Um, I know that the board also weighed in on uh, potentially a, um, Article 14. Um, there's also, uh, which is the strategic uh, plan and strategic uh, working group for new growth. Um, that is, uh, this board uh, recommend, uh, the select board uh, actually re uh, recommended no action. Um, we wrote, uh, the ARB wrote a letter, um, you know, also recommending um, no action that has also been held um, and seems to be re have been removed from the consent of them. Um, I'm not sure, um, you know, if, if there's any further response uh, needed from the board. I think we've, you know, made certainly our, our you know, your <laughs> uh, outlook on that clear. Um, but generally, I think that's what to expect um, this evening. It, it also appears that the Affordable Housing Everywhere um, article has been held. Um, and this board recommended no action on that, pursuant to much other action later um, in the what? Okay. Um, quick, sorry, go ahead. Um, if there is a substitute motion provided for that or amendments posed, um, would it be worthwhile to sort of tailor our schedule so that we could formally discuss them as a group and perhaps provide town meeting with an assessment? Sure. So I believe that we have a meeting scheduled for next Monday. With nothing on the agenda. So, so we that could was, reserve yeah. that if okay. that does come yeah. And I'd say also Article 14, which is the um, planning, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. If it does, yeah, if it yeah because um, Len Diggins is going to put in a substitute motion. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So I think if it doesn't come up before next Monday, we will have the substitute motion by then, I think. Right and should be able to look at it and see if you want to take a position on it. Okay. Um, Thank you. And then the only other item is um, to see whether or not there has been any movement on the MOU related to the transfer of properties. I know that Doug Hunt was working on that, however, also working on everything for town meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, I spoke with Doug Heim um, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. He said, I have to get that to you. So okay. continue to- So it's still in process. Ride Doug <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> to get us that document. Okay, great. Anything else? All right, is there a motion to adjourn to town meeting? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Kim. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank you. Everybody.